I wish I lived in way back, I wish I was more laid back I wish I didn't mind when people paid to not pay me back I wish I had a shorter list, I wish I was a materialist I wish I did not feel like solving problems with my fist What's up my wizards, it's Dev from SP- Hey Julie, <laughs> from SPMTG on the YouTube.com We Like Magic And we're gonna go ahead and continue the $10 Junkwares series You guys seem to like that <laughs> Last time I asked you which color of the remaining colors You'd like to see more black, green, or white. Abzan colors. That's a weird coincidence. But anyway, black was the winner by a lot, by far and away. And black almost beat red last time we did a video. It was pretty close, so I knew black was probably going to be your choice this time. I've been debating with myself for a while here over what creature I should start with in this deck tech. And ultimately, I've decided to show you the creature that does, <laughs> just does everything that we need to be done. And that is the four whole copies, hear me out, of Marionette Master. Well, Eminem does two out of the three things that we need to do in an Aristocrats deck, so I think she deserves all four copies, especially considering we have something in this deck that will allow us to cast her for a mana cheaper. So, you know, in a way, this is a five drop. <laughs> so I don't mind running four copies, especially considering, again, she just does the things we need her to do. Two out of the three things, as a matter of fact. You know, the three things that we need are to sacrifice guys. We need creatures that make multiple guys, so we'll have a big board of sacrificable dudes. And we need some sort of value for sacrificing those guys. Marionette Master helps out on at least two of those fronts. She's not a sacrifice salad herself, but she does make a bunch of creatures when she comes into play, all of which can be sacrificed. And not only that, she provides value when we do sacrifice things. And I want to just point out real quick, tokens do hit the graveyard for just an instant before they're exiled. So yes, you sacrifice servos and stuff, they will trigger Marionette Master. We're also looking for a little bit of artifact synergy in this deck, just a smidge, and Marionette Master also provides us with that. So, just does literally everything, and even though she costs six mana, I know that's a lot, I still think it's worth playing all four copies, especially considering you'll get the chance to cast her for cheaper on occasion. You know, while I'm telling you about Master, I might as well go ahead and tell you about her son. <laughs> that's Weapon Craft Enthusiast. Um, and then, yeah, I know they're different creature types, but these things are relatively close in what they do in that they can both give you um, more than one creature when they hit the battlefield. You know, Marionette Master can be four creatures. That's a full board right there. And Weaponcraft Enthusiast can be three guys at once. That's pretty sweet, whether you need to block stuff or you're just looking for value. You know, if you've got a Marionette Master, you play Weaponcraft Enthusiast, that's at least two more artifacts you can send to the graveyard and get crazy value out of. So, Weaponcraft Enthusiast, it's not a rare or junk rare or anything, but it is a very good common for this deck, so I'm definitely going to play all four. So, I've shown you a couple of creatures that can give you like a full board of sacrifice fodder but no actual way to sacrifice those guys so go ahead and show you how we're doing that we're gonna play four copies of syndicate trafficker and three copies of yehenny undying partisan both of these have really good synergy with marionette master and weapon craft enthusiast but mostly marionette master because we get that sweet dies trigger you know syndicate trafficker can eat artifacts servers are artifacts obviously and yehenny can eat creatures servers are creatures so they both work really really well with marionette master if we want to just get a bunch of triggers all at once and syndicate trafficker and yehenny can both get really big over the course of a game. Yehenny, when our opponent's creatures dies, gets a little bit bigger and is really, really hard to kill. Indestructible is pretty is pretty awesome. Same thing with Syndicate Trafficker. Giving him indestructibility till end of turn is ridiculous. <laughs> you can just keep either one of these guys out like all game and they just keep getting bigger. Aside from like trigger damage off of Marionette Master and a couple of other cards we're playing, Syndicate Trafficker and Yehenny are two of the best ways we have of winning the game. They can just end up being huge threats, you know, both of them can get to four, five, six power even sometimes over the course of the game. They just really finish things off for you and they're really, really hard to deal with. I'm gonna play three copies of Smothering Abomination here. This is our big flyer that can also win the game. It's nice to have a four mana, four power flyer. Decent stats right there, and I know it can be Harness Lightning pretty easily, whatever, I don't care. It's still a pretty big flyer that provides another sacrifice outlet for us. That's pretty important, and can give us card advantage, which is really, really important. So, just love Smothering Abomination. It can either block in the air, it can block and trade with a Heart of Kira. That's pretty cool. It can fly over for four. It can draw us a bunch of cards over the course of the game, you know. It can draw us, like, three or four cards in one big turn if we're sacrificing a bunch of guys. Just... Lots and lots of value off this dude, and he's pretty decent CMC for his stats, too. I don't see why we wouldn't play the guy. Here's a weird one. We're going to play two copies of Hope of Gearpeer in this deck, because we really don't have, like, any other one-drops, and it'd be nice to get a one-drop artifact. 
you know, we need some artifact synergy in this deck. We've only got like 14 quote unquote artifacts. And I say that because I'm counting cards that produce artifacts like weapon craft enthusiast and Eminem. So this is just another artifact that we have that we can sacrifice a syndicate trafficker. Or if we've gotten through with it that turn, we can sacrifice it and maybe get value off of stuff like marionette master and a couple of the other cards that we're playing, you know. So there's a lot of things we can do with this. We can also just straight up keep them from countering spells for the rest of the turn if it gets through. Just lots of awesome stuff. We can improvise with it. It only costs one mana. It's like 35 cents right now. So I just wanted to make some room in the deck for it. I think that it just does so many things that it can tie some ends together. Still more rares. So we're going to play three copies of Battle at the Bridge in the deck, which is actually fairly reliable removal <laughs> you know, like, again we've only got like 14 main deck artifacts that we're playing but that's enough to get one or two to artifacts to tap off of improvise and if you played a master or weapon craft enthusiast then you've got two or three artifacts to tap for improvise right now or right there you know this can take out gods and often will take out a four or five toughness creature even if you don't have any artifacts to improvise like it's fine just to pump your own mana into this don't need artifacts or anything. <laughs> you just take out a three or four toughness creature, gain you some life back. Like, all that's awesome, and it's a really good mana sink when you draw it late in the game. Like, a top deck battle at the bridge when you've got eight or nine mana and nothing else to do with it will gain you a huge amount of life and take out nearly anything on the other, si the other side of the board. So, battle at the bridge is like relatively impressive compared to what I thought it would be. Our last main deck rare is just one copy of Ever After in the deck and I'd like to make more room for it but I don't know how many six drops we can actually play in this deck and I don't know how I feel about playing a fifth six drop but we are sacrificing a lot of creatures in this deck and not any of them <laughs> have any way of coming back you know we don't we can't afford stuff like Liliana to get her creatures back you know there's just not a whole lot we can do as far as that avenue you know we can't afford dread wanderers we can't afford scrap heap scroungers so once creatures gone it's more or less gone we're trying to alleviate that by playing creatures like marionette master that make a bunch of creatures all at one time when they enter the battlefield but you'll still need to get creatures back from your yard occasionally so just the silver bullet ever after can help you get back like a marionette master or two <laughs> that could be nice marionette master and like a yahini they managed to kill or a syndicate trafficker you know just ever after i don't want to again don't want to play a bunch of copies but i think at least one copy is in order here because we will want to get stuff back on occasion that was 20 main deck rares of course not counting weapon craft enthusiasts but that's 20 main deck rares playing five more in the side that's a total of 25 rares and 75 cards but the whole thing can't be rares or it wouldn't be 10 bucks we got to have some supplemental commons and uncommons here and i actually think that if you're trying to build aristocrats you've got some of the best uncommons in the format so go ahead and show you these we're going to play four copies of bantu's monument to start it off here and i know you might balk at four copies of bantu's monument but let me explain First of all, playing four copies because I want to see it all the time. Like, <laughs> I definitely want to increase our chances of drawing this card as much as possible because it's fan freaking tastic. I wish that it was whenever a creature entered the battlefield, but it's whenever you cast a creature spell, obviously. And, you know, you'll be doing a good bit of that. There's 24 creatures in the deck, and you've got draw power in things like Smothering Abomination. So you can play more than one creature every turn and get some decent drains out of this over the course of the game. And it makes things like Marionette Master only cost four or five, excuse me. Smothering Abomination only costs three. Like, that's really, really good. And one more thing, it's an artifact. So if we sacrifice it while we have a, 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 a Marionette Master out, then we get a drain off of it. That's cool. We can sack it to Syndicate Trafficker to give him a little bit of help and a counter for the rest of the turn. So it's just nice to have as many artifacts as we can because we're trying to look for artifacts energy here. So these things will never, by consequence, clog up our hand. If we've got one in our hand and one in play, we can just sacrifice the one in play, get a little value out of it, and then play the one in our hand. Monument is just another card that impressed me a good bit, you know, it's just, it gives us um, drains, which is something we're looking for, as much incidental damage as we can possibly do is awesome. We're looking for artifacts that we can sacrifice and get value off of, so that's, check another box there, and we're playing a four of six drop, and we can reduce it to a five drop, and that makes it a lot more appealing, so I just love everything about Monument in this deck. We're also going to play four copies of Zulaport Cutthroat, but you saw that coming. We got like five more months to play this guy, and then I'm going to really, really miss him. We won't have like a good blood artist 
in standard. I guess we'll have like Pious Evangel, but note that I said I qualified it by saying a good blood artist <laughs> in standard. I'm not sure how good a three mana blood artist is in Pious Evangel, but as far as Zulaport, gonna miss him an awful lot. And in this deck, he can just straight up win the game for us, especially if we get multiple copies. Wouldn't be caught dead not playing a play set of Zulaport. Probably the best card in the deck, and really one of the whole reasons we can reliably build Aristocrats right now. So love me some Zuku. But anyway, the last card in the main deck is four copies of Bone Splinters, because it gives us another Sacrifice Outlet and an Unconditional Removal spell, which is awesome. Just one mana to kill anything on the other side of the board that's not indestructible. And you get to sacrifice a guy, which in this deck is an upside. One mana for Unconditional Removal plus upside. All four copies. Here's your lands. This is the only $10 budget rares deck so far that's had a non-basic land in it. We're going to play Mortuary Mire in this deck just as a one-of, you know, just to have something that can bring back a guy, you know. It's just, I don't necessarily love Mortuary Mire, but in this deck we will get into the late game if we possibly can. We will have some turns where we don't care about a tap land coming to play, but we definitely care about getting something back from our graveyard, so definitely at least the one copy of Mire. Here's our sideboard right here. We're going to play some dead weight against aggro because we don't, get to, don't want to get run over. I think that's imperative. We're going to play some Scarab Feast in case we run across Delirium decks, which I have seen a few more of and did fairly well at the, um, the last couple of GPs. Um, Midnight Oil is in there for our mid-range matchup so we can just draw more cards than them. Drawing more cards is one of the best things you can do in a game of Magic. So in mid-range matchups that we think are going to slog a little bit, I don't mind Midnight Oil at all. Um, and I'd like to build a whole deck around it and put it in the main, but I'm just not sure that we can do that. Now here are your power rankings right here. Final score of 56, which is about what we've seen from most of these $10 decks. Mid-50s is about what we expect. But for $10, that's not a bad deal, especially considering you get to play a lot of really fun cards. Like Marionette Masters, fun. Zulaport Cutthroat, that's a fun card. Yehenny and Syndicate Trafficker, fun cards. Like Aristocrats is one of my favorite deck types in all of Magic because it's just a super fun deck to play. It's a snowball deck, you know, it takes some time to set up, but once you get things rolling, you get these huge turns. You sacrifice four or five guys, you draw four or five cards, you get all these drains, you play more dudes and get drains off the monument, you'll end up draining like eight points of life in one turn, especially if you have multiple Zula ports. It all takes a little bit of setup, but it is very much worth it once you get there. So <laughs> Aristocrats is incredibly fun, and I love that we can build it for just 10 bucks. Before I finish up here, I want to talk about some other options we could play and not just upgrades i'll get to upgrades in just a second but i want to talk about some other cards here that cost well under a dollar and are very powerful so if you wanted to play them you absolutely could a few of these i was a little surprised by first of all ruinous path is only like 65 cents right now that's a really good deal for ruinous path you know and for, for that matter yahini's expertise is only about 70 cents right now so if you wanted to build a much more controlling mono blacklist you could do that, you know, three of Henny's Expertise and a couple of Ruinous Pass, that's less than $5, <laughs> you know, and that's a pretty decent removal suite, you know, you only really start talking about real money when you get into like Fatal Push, you know, and even Grasp of Darkness is like $1.35 right now, both of these cards are well under a Grasp of Darkness, and they're still fine, especially if you're building on a budget. For that matter, if you wanted to go with an energy theme, you totally could. I considered it, you know. Right now, Glensleeve Siphoner, which is actually seeing real mainstream standard play, is still only like 50 or 60 cents on TCG Player. That's a steal. And Demon of Dark Schemes, which would be your sort of ultimate payoff for playing energy in black, it's, a, it's only 70 cents. That is a great deal for Demon of Dark Schemes. So if you wanted to go energy, you got not only these rares at a relatively low cost, but couple of pretty good commons like Live Fast and Die Young that you could play in that deck. And finally, as far as budget options, you could also play Archfiend of Ifnir. It's plenty of stuff, like you could play, you know, stuff that lets you cycle cards or discard your own cards, you know, and play Archfiend. He's only like 60 cents. That's a good deal for a five power flyer that can like wrath your opponent's side of the board, a one-sided wrath. <laughs> That's really a steal. You know, it used to be like a dollar twenty-five, but people have sort of cooled on Archfiend and Vifnir, but for budget players, it's still a fantastic option. But if you wanted to upgrade this deck, there's also a lot of really good non-budget options in black. First of all, you could go with Dread Wanderer or Scrap Heap Scrounger. I already mentioned these guys, but they'd be really good for putting back into your hand after you've sacrificed them. You know, Dread Wanderer and especially Scrap Heap. I really, really, really suggest <laughs> Scrap Heap in the deck. Not only because it keeps coming back, you can keep sacking it, but 
it's an artifact. We need a little bit of artifact synergy. He works with that too. So either one of these, especially Scrap Heap, great choices. You could also throw the old Metallic Mimic Animation Module combo into this deck if you wanted to. And that would deck, make the deck maybe a little bit more Aetherborn focused or maybe even more Servo focused if you wanted to go that direction with it. So either one of these would be great. You could just throw the combo in and that would work really, really well for Sack Fodder in this deck. Obviously, Kalidus would be a pretty good choice for this deck, too. It's something else that lets us sacrifice stuff really crazy good against aggro. Gets huge as the game goes on. The lifelink helps us stay alive. Just can't tell you how good Kalidus is for this deck. Probably play that over Smothering Abomination. Yeah, probably. You could also play either Liliana in this deck. I already brought that up. You know, you could either play Liliana the Last Hope or Liliana um, Death's Majesty in the deck. And either one would be fine for getting dudes back from the graveyard and extra stuff, too. So... You know, and like Liliana, um, the five mana one could give you zombies to sacrifice. That'd be cool too. So that'd be nice. You could play either one of these to great effect, I would imagine. And finally, Fatal Push. Best removal spell in the format. Yes, best removal spell in the format. If you had the, what is it, $8 a pop now to play these, you could do that too. But I, that's almost the entire budget of the deck in one card. But Fatal Push is so good right now that you'd probably want to play a couple copies at least. But I'm tapped out for this one. That's all I've got for this deck. Let me know how you felt down there in the comments section. This is my favorite of the $10 decks so far, you know. The red deck was really, really weird, and when it gets going, it's pretty freaking sweet, but it takes a minute to get going. The blue deck, also really fun, and I actually think that deck is relatively competitive, but not a whole lot of synergy overall in the deck. This deck, all about synergy, and once it finally snowballs to the place it wants to be in the game, it can just pull off some really dirty, hilarious tricks. So, this is my favorite deck of these so far. Let me know how you feel about it and what you'd change if given the chance. So, always interested in that and always interested in what you want to do next time. we got to finish up this series before Hour of Devastation comes out. We've only got two colors left. So, what do you want to see? Green or white? I was a little bit surprised by White's representation in the comments section last time. I didn't think that anybody wanted to see budget mono white rares, but I actually think there's some pretty good budget mono white rares. But I also really like green right now. I told you last time, I want to make green for you. So, you know, just whichever one you want to see next is the one I want to do for you, though. Just tell me in the comments what you'd rather see. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please click like. That helps me out more than pretty much anything you could do. You know, just clicking like puts it in more recommended feeds. That helps the channel grow. So thank you for doing that. Please do that. <laughs> you can also check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash sbmtg. And patrons, just letting you know if you're watching this, that cards, signed cards, are going to go out in just the next couple of days here. So look for those in your mailbox for the next week or two, depending on where you are in relation to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm in Georgia in the United States, so if you're in England, it might take a couple extra days, just letting you know. But anyway, do all that stuff and follow me on Twitter at SBMTGDev, and I am out of here. Thanks for watching, my wizards.